Hi, and welcome to the Mobile Developer Builder Series. My name is David Ha, and I'll be your guide as we build a mobile application together on the Now platform. Today, we'll be walking through the very first few steps in building a new action function. Today, we're going to create a new record in the form of creating a new instant. As a user, I'll be able to use quick actions on my mobile device to create new records on the instant list. When configuring this, you may have different required fields for a new record. For this example, we'll require the user to fill in urgency, short description, and impact fields in order to create a new instant. In order to create an action function, there's a three-step process. First, you create the action item. Second, you build the action function. And lastly, you associate the action function to an applet. The action item defines the action function using action item fields and parameters. You can use parameters to define changes being made on the action and how changes get made. So let's go ahead and get started by creating our action item with parameters. We can create a new action item by clicking out this pop-out icon next to action items. And then we'll click new. Let's go ahead and name this create new incident. Since we want to create new records, the type will be new. But we also have other options like update or delete records, as well as write mail and scripts as well. And since we're creating new records on the instant list, we'll pull from the instance table. And once we're done, we'll go ahead and submit. Now that we've created an action item, we need to create item parameters to determine information on required fields that were passed into the action. For this example, we're going to create three item parameters for urgency, short description, and impact. Let's create the first one now by clicking New. The first parameter will be for urgency. For the type field, we have a bunch of options here. Uh, we have Boolean for radio buttons, date, time, or attachments. For this case, urgency is simply a string field, so we'll go ahead and submit. Then we'll close out the tab and create our second one. And this one will be for short description which is also a string type field. And then we'll, we'll create our last one as well. The last item parameter is for impact, and it's also a string type field. Once we created our three item parameters, we can refresh the screen by clicking here. And now we can see our three item parameters. To complete our action item, we now have to map our fields for our item parameters. For these set field values, the first field will be urgency. The second field would be short description. The last field was impact. We now want to add our item parameters that we just created as a condition for our action item. And we can do that by clicking on the contextual reference value icons on each one of those fields. We'll match urgency to urgency, short description to short description, and impact to impact. And now that we're done with our action item, we'll go ahead and click update. Now step one, Creating our action items complete. Let's close out this tab. Let's move on to step two, which is building the action function. Under functions, there's a pop out button for actions. We'll go ahead and click that. We'll click new. Let's call it create new instant so that's easy to find. For context, we have a couple options here. You can use record when the action has a context to the current record they're executing it from. But in this case, we'll be using global. Um, because we're creating new records that don't require additional context. We'll select the action item that we just created, which is create new instant. If we're using images or signature field, we will check mark the boxes here. For the conditions tab, since we're creating a new record, we won't need any conditions or roles. On the messages tab, we also have the option to customize success and failure messages. And if I wanted offline functionality for this action, I would enable it here. Now that we're done, we'll go ahead and submit. If we scroll down, we'll see two tabs for UI parameters and action parameter mappings. We now need to create UI parameters for the three fields that we're passing to the action. The UI parameter determines how the fields will be passed when the record is created. So let's create our first one for urgency. We'll start off by naming this urgency. The parameter type and the button have already been filled in for me. We'll check mandatory to require user input. The input source can either be input or autofill. You can use the autofill fields like GPS location, data, and user. In this example, we want to use user input so that users will have to manually select the urgency. We'll also change the input type from text to list, uh, and that's because we want to provide users with a quick list of urgencies to pick from. Uh, you also have other options like text, search list, and QR barcode as well. The table name is incident.
And then the field that we want to pick from instant is urgency. We also don't want users to multi-select urgencies, so we'll leave that as blank. And the default value will be none as well. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click Submit. And then let's close out of this tab. Now let's create our second UI parameter. And this one will be for short description. It will be a mandatory field. We'll change the input type to, uh, we'll keep it as text. And that's because short description is a free form field. And then once we're ready, we'll go ahead and click Submit. And then we'll create our last UI parameter for impact. We'll name this impact. We'll make it mandatory. The input type will be list. It'll pull from the instance table. We'll map it to impact. And then we'll submit. And then we'll close out of this tab. Now that we're all done creating our UI parameters, we can refresh the screen by clicking here. We now have to map our UI parameters to the item parameters that we created earlier. So under the action parameters mappings tab, let's create new records for each of the mappings. Let's create a first one for urgency. We'll map the urgency item parameter to the urgency UI parameter, and then we'll submit. And let's do the same for short description. And then lastly, impact. We'll map impact to impact. And now that we've created those three, we can go ahead and refresh the screen by clicking here. And now the very last step is to associate our new action function to an applet. We already have an active instance applet created, so we'll associate the new action function to the active instance applet. Let's get started by opening up the applet. On the primary screen tab, we'll go ahead and open up the functions tab. Since we're creating a new instance, it'll make most sense to set it up as the top menu function. For action functions, the only places that to use this are the top menu or swipe. But for global action functions, you can only use this on the top menu of the primary screen. We'll label this function create new incident. And then we'll select the action function that we created. Now we just have to click save and open it up on our devices. On our device, we'll refresh the home screen. We'll tap into the mobile builder series and into active instance. In the top menu, we now see that there's a new action available. Let's go ahead and tap it and create a new incident. For the impact, we'll say it's high. Urgency is high. In short description, we'll say that my VPN isn't working. And then we'll submit. Now, when we look back at our list, the incident that we just created is highlighted in blue. Drilling in we see some of that information filled in here. In just in minutes, we just created our first action function to create new incidents. The benefit to using Mobile Studio is that once I create an action once, I can save a whole lot of time by recreating it in different locations within my scope. And that wraps up our quick introduction to new action functions. Thank you for watching.